The Saab JAS39 Gripen E and F is, you know, a formidable fourth generation plus fighter jet. It's really known for its advanced avionics, cost effectiveness and operational flexibility. However, there's a critical vulnerability that lies deep within its airframe, its engine. The Gripen E and F relies entirely on the American-made General Electric F414 power plant. Now, this dependency has recently shifted from being just a simple supply chain detail into, well, a major strategic crisis for Sweden. The core of the problem is that every single Gripen sold to a foreign nation requires a re-export license from the United States government. This gives Washington a powerful veto over Sweden's defense export strategy, a reality that's come into sharp focus lately. This vulnerability was really starkly exposed in early 2025, when the Trump administration made a decisive move to block a potential sale of Gripen E and F jets to Colombia. The Colombian Air Force was actively seeking to replace its aging fleet of Israeli Kafir fighters, and honestly, the Gripen was a leading contender. But the US refused to grant the necessary re-export license for the F-414 engine. This action was widely seen as a maneuver to pressure Colombia into purchasing the American-made Lockheed Martin F-16 fee instead. For Saab and the Swedish government, this was a devastating blow. It showed, quite clearly, that the commercial success and strategic reach of their premier fighter aircraft were subject to the political whims and competitive interests of the United States. The situation has created an undeniable crisis for the Gripen program. With about one-third of its components sourced from the United States, the engine is just the most prominent example of its reliance on American technology. This dependency effectively compromises Sweden's neutrality and its ability to conduct an independent foreign and defense policy. Potential customers for the Gripen now have to consider the risk that their purchase could be blocked by Washington for reasons that have nothing to do with their relationship with Sweden. This kind of geopolitical uncertainty makes the Gripen a much less attractive option on the highly competitive global fighter market, undermining decades of Swedish engineering and investment. The American veto power isn't just a theoretical problem, it's an active and present danger to the entire Gripen ecosystem. Nations looking for a capable and affordable fighter jet, one that's free from the political entanglements of a superpower, are precisely the target market for the Gripen. Yet, the current arrangement with the General Electric engine directly contradicts this key selling point. The blockage of the Colombian sale has really forced Stockholm to confront a difficult truth. Without a change, the Gripen's export potential will be severely limited. Sweden must now urgently find a way to break free from this American chokehold if its prized fighter jet is to have a viable future. In the face of this American-imposed obstacle, Sweden is now, well, seriously exploring a radical but necessary solution replacing the Gripen's American heart with a European one. This strategic pivot has revived long-standing discussions about developing a non-US engine for the fighter. The goal is pretty clear, to ensure the Gripen's export viability and restore Sweden's strategic autonomy. Among the potential European partners, the British engine manufacturer Rolls-Royce stands out as the most logical and capable candidate. Rolls-Royce has a deep history of producing world-class jet engines, and it's one of only two European companies, alongside France's Safran, with the expertise to design and build such a sophisticated power plant. The idea of a Rolls-Royce engine in a Swedish fighter isn't actually new. Historically, Sweden has a precedent for using British propulsion. The iconic Saab J29 Tunnen and the futuristic J35. Draken of the Cold War era were both powered by Rolls-Royce engines. This historical relationship really provides a foundation of trust and technical understanding that could be invaluable in a modern partnership. A switch to a Rolls-Royce engine, maybe a derivative of the EJ200 that powers the Eurofighter Typhoon, is being described by defense analysts as a potential lifeline. It's seen as the most direct path to saving the Gripen E and F from being permanently sidelined by US export controls. 
Of course, integrating a new engine into an existing airframe is a monumental task. It's far more complex than just swapping out one part for another. The process would require a significant redesign of the Gripen's fuselage, new air intakes and a complete re-evaluation of the aircraft's aerodynamics and performance characteristics. This effort would demand substantial investment in both time and money. However, the alternative, allowing the Gripen program to be slowly strangled by US export restrictions, is far more costly in the long run. The initial investment in a European engine could pay for itself many times over by unlocking access to a global market that's currently closed off by American politics. Ultimately, a partnership with Rolls-Royce offers a pragmatic path forward. It would liberate the Gripen from its strategic dependency and re-establish it as a truly independent European fighter option. While the technical challenges are significant, they're not insurmountable for two nations with such advanced aerospace industries. For Sweden, the move represents more than just a technical fix. It's a declaration of strategic intent. By pursuing a European engine, Sweden would be taking a decisive step to secure its defense industrial base and ensure that the future of its flagship fighter program is determined in Stockholm and London, not in Washington. The Gripen engine crisis isn't just a Swedish problem, it's really a symptom of a much larger issue facing the entire European defense sector. The US decision to block the sale to Colombia is seen by many in Europe as a sign of a more aggressive American strategy. This strategy appears aimed at suppressing competition from allied nations to maintain its dominance in the global arms market. This has sent a chill through European capitals and defense ministries as many of their most advanced military platforms rely on critical American components. The Gripen's predicament serves as a stark warning to other European defense initiatives that they too could be vulnerable to American political pressure. This realization is prompting a wider push for technological sovereignty across the continent. European nations are starting to understand that true strategic autonomy is impossible without an independent industrial base free from reliance on external powers for key technologies. Several major European defense programs are exposed to similar risks. For instance, South Korea's KF-21 Boromai fighter, Turkey's Khan, and Italy's M346 trainer all use American-designed engines. Even the multinational Eurodrone project relies on US technology. The American action against Sweden could be the catalyst that forces a continent-wide re-evaluation of these dependencies, accelerating efforts to develop indigenous European solutions for everything from engines to sensors and software. In this context, a European-powered Gripen becomes more than just a Swedish fighter. It becomes a symbol of European resilience. By choosing a Rolls-Royce engine, Sweden would be making a powerful statement in favor of a bi-European approach to defense procurement. This move would align perfectly with broader initiatives like the European Defense Fund and Permanent Structured Cooperation, or PESCO, which aim to foster collaboration and reduce fragmentation within the European defense industry. A successful integration of a British engine into a Swedish jet would show that complex, cross-border European defense projects are not only possible, but essential for maintaining a competitive edge and strategic freedom. The success of the Dassault Rafale and the Eurofighter Typhoon, both of which use European engines, really offers a model to follow. While these aircraft aren't entirely free of US components, their core propulsion systems are sovereign, making them far less susceptible to American export vetoes. The Gripen's struggle highlights the urgent need to extend this autonomy to other areas of defense technology. If Europe can successfully de-risk its supply chains and develop its own critical components, it can ensure its defense products can compete fairly on the world stage based on their merits, not on the political calculations of a transatlantic ally. Adopting a European engine could, you know, fundamentally reshape the Gripen E and F's position in the fiercely competitive global fighter market. The primary advantage would be the newfound freedom from US export restrictions.
This would immediately make the Gripen a more attractive option for a wide range of countries that wish to avoid entanglement in US foreign policy. Nations in South America, Southeast Asia and Africa, which are often caught between great power rivalries, could procure a highly capable, modern fighter without needing a green light from Washington. This could open up significant new export opportunities that were previously considered just too politically complicated, breathing new life into the program. Furthermore, a European-powered Gripen could really enhance its appeal within Europe itself. As nations across the continent look to bolster their air forces in response to growing security threats, a fully European fighter jet offers clear benefits for interoperability and industrial cooperation. It would strengthen the European defense technology and industrial base, keeping vital skills and investments within the continent. This could make the Gripen a compelling choice for nations looking for an alternative to the American F-35, especially those prioritizing lower operational costs and greater control over their supply chains. A potential reconsideration by Canada, which is reportedly exploring the Gripen as a lower-cost alternative, could gain traction if the US engine dependency is resolved. However, the question of performance remains. The Gripen E and F is a fourth-plus generation fighter, featuring an advanced AESA radar and a sophisticated electronic warfare suite. While a new engine from Rolls-Royce would be designed to meet or exceed the performance of the current GEF-414, the Gripen's fundamental airframe design is still, well, of a fourth-generation lineage. It lacks the inherent stealth characteristics of fifth-generation fighters like the F-35. In a modern air combat environment that's increasingly dominated by beyond visual range engagements and networked warfare, the Gripen faces a growing capability gap against stealth aircraft. A new engine doesn't change this fundamental reality. Despite this, the Gripen's future could be secured by leaning into its strengths, affordability, reliability, and now, strategic independence. For many air forces, the astronomical cost of acquiring and operating a fleet of F-35s is simply prohibitive. A European-powered Gripen would offer a credible, high-performance alternative that is both cost-effective and free from political strings. By breaking its dependency on the US and embracing a European solution, Sweden can reposition the Gripen not as a direct competitor to the F-35, but as the smartest choice for nations seeking a sovereign and sustainable air combat capability. This strategic shift may be the game-changer the Gripen needs to thrive for decades to come.